Hi, this is Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte, and um, I'm going to give a brief demo of how to create a site model uh, using lines from a DWG file. And um, what I've got here is actually uh, the Davidson CAD file that we gave you guys, and I've already taken the liberty of actually cleaning it up a little bit uh, just to show you uh, what I did. I actually took a lot of the um, the lines that we got and I took them into uh, Rhino and I made sure that everything was joined as a, um, a consistent outline okay and uh, so that involves actually joining lines together using the join command and trimming things uh, filleting with a zero radius to kind of join edges using the curve close command and what I really want is just a series of closed uh, curves and that's going to give me a clean extrusion for the building outlines, and it's going to give me a clean uh, extrusion for the uh, for the sidewalks and that kind of thing. I'm not really too concerned about the um, the purple lines, the lines on um, um, on layer one. Um, what I'm going to do with those is actually just use them as basically lines uh, in the Make 2D file, so they don't really need to be closed. Okay. Only things I'm going to be extruding or using uh, as part of an extrusion uh, need to be closed. So I've already actually cleaned this file up. Um, I'll kind of spare you how to do that. Um, but uh, you know, again, the, the general idea is that if I can click on this here, <clears throat> just got to make sure that these are actually when you click on it, it's a closed thing. You can do this in AutoCAD with PEdit. Um, again, I did I did this with a few operations in Rhino, but I'll kind of spare you that detail. So I'm going to start with this file that I've given you actually, and um, the first thing I want to do is actually cut out the uh, sidewalks and, and and kind of make the curbs and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the layers uh, um, one and three. So I just left with the blue lines and this outline um, of the site. Okay, so I'm going to choose the outline first. And I'm going to make it a planar surface, so it's PLA and AR surface, SRF. And what planar, planar means flat, and it basically this command takes any curve that's flat and converts it to a surface. And if we go into the um, you know, shaded viewport, we'll see that we've created a surface. And then actually going to delete the uh, curve that you used to generate it. So click the curve and delete it. You don't need to do that, but it's one less piece of geometry to select. It's easy. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a command called split, and I'm going to split that main surface. And what split is, it's kind of like a trim, only instead of removing uh, the pieces, it preserves uh, the you know both pieces. So imagine split is like um, you have like a big piece of cookie dough and you have a cookie cutter, and that's what these, these other lines are, and you just push the cutter into the dough. And I'm not removing the outside of the dough or the inside of the dough, I just keep both pieces. Okay, I get to keep all the cookie dough, okay? And um, so, I, it, so I start the command, and it says select objects to split. The surface is the dough, I'm gonna select that to split. I'm gonna press enter, and now the cutting objects. And the cutting objects are all of these blue lines. No, these are closed lines, okay? because okay, so our cookie cutter is closed. I'm going to go to the layer here, the blue layer, and right click and say select objects, and that selects all of those objects that are on that layer. Okay, and now since I've done that, I'm going to press enter. Computer's going to crunch for a little bit here. And if I go into my uh, perspective view, you'll actually see, if I zoom out here, see it's a separate piece. So it's actually created separate pieces for all this, and that's exactly what I want. Now, what I want to do um, that makes sense is I want to take all the curves and just kind of extrude them up a little bit, like six inches. I'm going to assume a six inch curve, and that's going to give me um, the sidewalks and, and, the, and the curves that I want. Now, <clears throat> we could go in and we could pick all the little pieces, you know, hold shift and kind of pick all the islands and things like that and, and whatever, but that actually gets kind of tedious. A trick that I think I've shown you before, but I will call out again, is um, sometimes it's easier to choose the things that we don't want to pick and then use the computer to select the inverse, and that'll, that'll choose the things we want. So 
the roads are actually, if I choose the road, it actually grabs kind of everything. And if I choose this other piece here, it grabs a lot, and this last little kind of piece left over. And if I do the inverse, that's going to select all the curves. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, I'm just holding shift to pick the roads. Go up to edit, select objects, invert. And you, it's hard to tell, but basically I've selected the curves. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, extrude surface. So I'm going to extrude X E X T R U extrude S R F surf. Okay. And it's going to crunch for a bit, but you can see that what this actually lets me do is so I'm extruding the surface. I think you've we've talked about or we will talk about extruding the the, the, the curve. So if I have a curve, I can create a um, a solid out of it. Here, if I have a surface, um, I can I can extrude it and uh, give it extra dimensionality, give it give it a surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, 0 0.05 or 0 0.5, excuse me. And uh, that's a half a foot because the units in the file are feet. 0 0.5 is six inches. Okay. My settings are going to be cap. Yes, I want to I want to create uh, a solid, so it's going to have a cap on the top and the bottom. Delete the input. I'm going to delete the original curves, and then the rest of these are fine as default. <clears throat> the direction is what I said it to be. Uh, it's default Z. Uh, both sides no boundary whatever. So 0 0.05 cap delete input and press enter. Crunch crunch crunch. Now you know did it do anything? If I zoom in, check that out. It's a very 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 slight uh, curve. And when we start to put our cameras in this file, that's really going to look like uh, curves, so successful. Now, one thing you might notice, though, is that it did actually produce, these are all gray, so <clears throat> to kind of help me out to visualize it, I'm going to click the roads again. I'm going to go select invert. And I'm going to make sure if I go into, uh, actually, sorry, I, I have the extrude command, was oh, it active here. Um, do that again here. Make sure I'm not. Yeah, these are extruded. Okay, so I choose the um, the roads again, and then I'm going to invert, select objects, invert, um, and then I'm going to change the layer to uh, two. So now, I mean, this is just kind of color. It doesn't. It's not only going to render, but I get a really good sense that the blue are my curves. Curves. <laughs> okay, pretty good. Okay, so this next piece, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on the uh, purple layer. And the purple layer, you see our roads there, are, let me just turn these off here. Purple layer are these lines we have. And these are kind of just flavor, they kind of did sort of show, you know, paths, um, sidewalks, crosswalks, like that kind of thing. So they're kind of nice to have. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to front view, and I'm going to right click and say select all objects, and I'm going to move these, MOV, click, and just move them up and down, like like hold down shift, make sure you move them up and down, just straight up and down, I'm just going to move them up, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so I got my blue lines, my blue sidewalks and my purple ones. And I'm going to do a command called project. And project is going to kind of, it's going to kind of cookie cutter thing where I'm just going to put it, instead of like cutting something, I'm just going to transfer the purple lines to the surface uh, in the Z coordinate. So it's just kind of like making a score or like an impression. It's just kind of transferring them in 3D space. Okay. And this is going to help us when we make 2D because it's going to give us these extra lines we want. So the curves I want to project are the purple ones. So I go right click, select objects, enter, and the select surfaces, polylines to project onto, that's going to be on my blue ones. Now I'm not going to say delete input. Not yet. So I'm going to keep the purple lines. And I go into the blue and I say select objects, press enter, crunch, crunch, crunch. Take a little bit. See, these are the purple lines we had that are kind of floating up here. And you need them up there, right, because they need to project down onto these. And you have to do this in the top view, okay? If you don't do that, you get a, a bug. Um, 
what it done is it's, it's kind of moved them into Z to the top of this uh, object, okay? And we're gonna do this again. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the blue stuff. As you can see, we've got the two copies here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the, the, the gray, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead, actually, first things first. I'm gonna go ahead and hide these. We don't wanna accidentally push those onto our uh, gray, so our streets. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say um, project. Select the curves to project onto. And then actually, I can kind of select those and then kind of deselect. Um, actually, you know, I'll do this again. Um, go ahead and say um, project. Select the curves and points to project. I can go to front view and then kind of grab these and go back to top view. <clears throat> project onto, or sorry, press enter. Project the services, uh, select the services to project onto. I'm going to click my gray stuff. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to do delete input yes, because I'm just, I'm going to get rid of those curves now. Okay, and that's going to delete them. And then crunch. And you see that gets rid of them except for the crosswalks. Not, not too bad, not too bad at all. Okay, and then turn on my things, and then I'm gonna show the rest of those purple lines. And just to show you, I'm gonna select them. Look at that. So now they, <clears throat> in the Z, you know, the, the crosswalks are on the street, and the other pieces of it are actually on the uh, blue piece. They're on the pavement here. Not too bad. I'm actually noticing that it looks like the ones projected all the way through the pavement. So that might that might look a little strange in uh, Make 2D, but you can probably fix that yourself. In any case, though, the purple lines have been kind of cut into the um, the um, site, and that's going to help us visualize it uh, later on. Now the last piece of this thing are the buildings, and that's actually going to be, if I double click here, that's going to be this um, red layer. Turn these off. So you can go in and, with using your site measurements, using uh, you know Google Earth, using the things that you figured out on the site, you can click these uh, closed curves that I made, and you can do extrude curve. So extrude the CRV. Not surface, not extrude SRF, extrude CRV, because these are curves. And your settings are going to be cap yes, delete input yes. And if they're not, you can just toggle it, just click. Okay. Cap, you know, again, gives it a top and a bottom, it makes it a solid. And delete input deletes the original curve. And you type in the extrusion distance, and in this case, the distance, you know, is, is in feet, so if these are 20 feet tall, you could say 20 foot. And just go through and quickly kind of figure out like what the heights of these things are. Okay. And if you press enter, it'll um, run the last command, or if you right click. So since I just ran, ran um, extrude curve, I can kind of quickly extrude that. And you know the library is you know 30 feet. You guys have to actually do your do your homework on this a little bit, but you know maybe 36 feet. And just kind of quickly populate the site. With these buildings, and if you you know if you need to, you might actually need to go in and uh, begin to break these down a bit more. There's actually more more to them. Um, you know if it's if it if it's if it's important to um, how you consider your uh, your site model, but kind of go through and figure out like what the scale of some of these things uh, should be. You don't have to be 100 percent accurate, but what we want is you know to be able to put cameras in this. And then to be able to understand uh, when we turn our site back on, you know, when you put you put your kiosk on the site with a camera, how do we begin to understand that? Okay, and that would really be your next step. You know, go into your four view, turn on the camera, right? Like all the different, like all the things we did in the last assignment. And you know, being able to disable snaps here. 
being able to place yourself in various positions. Um, on that site. It's <laughs> not doing too well. Let's try this again. So, using the method I showed you guys to kind of get pretty close to where you want to be. And then to turn on the camera. And then to kind of play with it a bit more. And you guys know this, um, this drill pretty well at this point. But I'll go ahead and Fix it out. So let's see the height of this point. It's pretty high actually. Z, you know, that's actually fine. Um, and then let's go ahead and increase, decrease the lens length. So, you know, again, we've got our, our old friends, the, uh, the target point, which, you know, you could aim at down the street and your camera point so I'm, I'm kind of crossing the street here let's say and this is the view that I have and you know you could you could begin to think about the progression you know if you have your kiosk here like looking at um, basically what it actually looks like on the site begin to um, you know, sweeping your view across. You get the view from the sculpture you guys have been looking at. We'll talk about this more later in the week about how you actually get a, a progression across the site. But uh, so experiment with it with your camera and don't forget to save your camera. And you know, really getting a good, good view of your kiosk on the site. And what we're going to have you guys do for uh, Wednesday is actually just kind of a quick kind of mass model of your site. And you look at, we'll see some techniques in the next part. Uh, but I'll just quickly kind of show you something. If I go into top view, I'll go ahead and save this view actually. kiosk and then if I go into top view so you can do different things um, the vocabulary that you should have is probably is probably pretty pretty basic um, I would do I would do things like um, just kind of mass it out with maybe a box form and you can actually type in you know the corner uh, the, the length of it you know the width of it the height of it and uh, so just kind of putting in things like that, and then if you need to, if you need to orient it, you could rotate it. So rotate, click the center, click the angle, and then click a new angle. And we'll look at we'll look at some of this stuff later. But you know another thing you can do is um you know take a line you draw and then extrude it, extrude curve. And that would actually give you. Let me go ahead. So that would that you know, you, you could begin to kind of mass out in 3D um, the general kind of shape of your the general kind of 3D part key to scale um, of your kiosk. And then you can take your camera <clears throat> and examine that. Um, on the site and, and sort of make some quick views and make 2D and make some quick views of it and you can see its relationship to you know the sidewall like relationship to the, the, the buildings across the street to the um, to the park and to the library okay so just 
quickly just kind of planes and, and kind of boxes and things like that, and, and not without not with too much detail, but just just to kind of get a sense of of how it works on your site. And um, that's really what we expect for that part of the assignment. Okay, so create a basic site model using the techniques I showed, and um, create a basic kind of mass model of your kiosk to scale as as close as possible. Um, and then generate a few views of the procession. Look at the design themes. You know, begin to create some diagrams using that. Begin to understand um, how how your project is used. And uh, you know, again, I think all the different themes that we talked about. Uh, you know, the kind of approach, the corner, human scale, occupation. Like these kinds of things can be talked about in this basic kind of modeling technique. So that's part A of the assignment. Um, Join me in a second for part B. Hey class, it's uh, Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte. And um, this is part B of the module five assignment, which is uh, where we're gonna model the different components that we need uh, for our kiosk models. And uh, this is actually a great opportunity to take advantage of um, you know, what's, what's different about using the computer to uh, draw than uh, analog methods and also um, a good place to learn about the basic uh, modeling operations in rhinoceros. Okay, so we're going to make all the uh, steel and uh, wood components and the panels that we need, and, uh, and the HD TVs uh, for our kiosks. And uh, so what I uh, would do first thing is um, starting from a new file, <clears throat> I would go ahead and set your um, your your initial file to uh, you know large objects uh, feet. Um, it's pretty standard, uh, like template, and you could, you know, keep the keep the uh, like four view, like the quad view, and uh, as your default. And uh, in the top viewport, I'm gonna go ahead and use the rectangle uh, curve tool. So it's kind of like rectangle in AutoCAD. You can access it this here, and you're gonna click somewhere, start a corner, and then it's gonna say other corner um, or length, and the length of it. Um, for the cross sections, right? Let's you could do a two inch, you know, by two inch. So the length could be two inches, and then the width could be two inches, and it's you know pretty small. That's the smallest member. Um, to move something, you just click it and hold down the mouse and drag it. You could also type in the move command, and then you can pick a point and uh, move a point. Okay, so that's our two inch, and repeat the process. So rectangle and you know four inch, uh, four inch. And you, you know you could do this with scale and scale it uh, by like twice the size, but I like the explicitness of this. And uh, you know eight inch, uh, eight inch. Okay, and so those are the initial uh, cross sections. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to offset the curves to give them a thickness. And these sections we've decided are probably a quarter inch thick. So we're going to go ahead and say offset, which is the offset command. And the offset uh, distance, click D, is uh, 0.25 uh, inches. Okay, make sure to do the um, you know um, the quotation marks. And uh, you can keep all this the uh, same, it's fine. And um, go ahead and you can click a line and then click on the side you want to offset, which is inside, and you'll do that. And you can quickly reestablish the command by pressing an enter or right clicking. That'll reload the command. So you can give offset again. Click, right click, offset. You can quickly establish those uh, sections, and it's important uh, to have thickness, right? Because uh, these are actually they have a sectional kind of property uh, with them. So um, our our channels actually have that uh, thickness. And um, you know if this bothers you that they're not aligned, you can go in and you can turn on your um, snaps, and go into tools, um, object snap. Persistent O snap, and you can make sure to toggle that on, and then click on endpoint snap. You can start a line, holding shift, you know, create a horizontal line. And don't have project or S track on, just FYI. And um, you can go ahead and select a line, say move, 
like a corner, and uh, you could actually do a perpendicular snap, and then just kind of snap it um, to that baseline, <clears throat> and then pick the line and delete it, kind of align these together. It's not really necessary, but it helps. You can also move a, an object, you can type move and then hold shift, and you can kind of uh, move it left and right. And again, I just restarted the move command there. So that's that's a really handy thing to do. You know, um, another thing you can do, um, besides moving it to um, to align the snap, is use the align command. And so you can um, you know, take these shapes and select them all. And you can say align, A L I G N, and you can say horizontal center, and that'll just kind of align them together. Okay, so that's that's kind of you know, interesting, and then just you know move them over again. Let's go and take these, and to make our L sections, let's copy them. Let's go ahead and zoom into top view. And to make the L, I'm going to go ahead and having snaps turned on, have endpoint snaps turned on, take the line tool, and draw a line across the edges of these. Well, same thing. This is also why scale wouldn't work if we had these, because if I scaled it, it actually changed the cross section of this. Okay, so I've got those lines drawn. Let me go ahead and fire up the um, trim command. Okay, so trim, T-R-I-M. And this works similar to AutoCAD. Uh, select the cutting objects. The cutting objects <coughs> are the lines are just true. And if you select something, just press control and click, and then it'll deselect it. Remember, hold shift to add things to um, our selection. Okay, so those are the cutting objects. And then it says select object to trim, and then you, you know, pick these two lines. You can also sweep the two, and then I'll delete them. <clears throat> then let's grab all these lines together and say join, J O I N, join three closed curves. Okay, so those are our sections uh, for these different these different pieces. Okay. Now, um, the next thing you can do um, that I think that I think is, is useful is select everything, and we're going to array these. And I think we've might have talked about arrays in AutoCAD, but an array is basically just um, a set of copies. So array, A R R A Y number in the x direction. I'm actually going to make uh, seven copies. Number in the y is going to be one. So remember, x is going to be this way, y is this way. You can see the little legend here. Z, one. And then click my spacing. And um, let's say that they're going to be, and hold shift, say this far apart. And that quickly creates, you know, row after row. Uh, of these in array, and then press enter to accept. Sure. I might have too many, but I can always delete the ones uh, that I don't need. Let's go ahead and go to perspective view from the top view. And um, to make these into different uh, sections, um, I can go ahead and um, select them. The cross sections. I can say extrude curve, and I want to say no both sides, cap yes, delete input yes, and then you then you extrude them. And so I can extrude these, you know, one foot. If I go into shaded, okay, builds my one foot pieces. <clears throat> Repeat the command, right click, um, extrude curve, extrusion distance one foot. There are two foot, sorry, two uh, apostrophe, two foot. Select these, extrude, Extrusions four foot, <clears throat> and then pick these. Extrude curve, extrusion distance eight foot. Actually, I guess I didn't need these other ones here, so just go ahead and delete these. Select and delete. Yeah, actually four four copies. Um, I don't know why I was thinking seven. Um, so here, here are your four sets, and then um, for the steel plates, you know, you do something uh, pretty similar. Go into the rectangle command. And how big is a rectangle? The rectangle is going to be 
uh, you know, four foot by four foot. So the four foot, four foot. Another rectangle is going to be, you know, um, <coughs> four by two, four foot, two foot. Another rectangle is going to be um, <coughs> two foot by two foot. And then another rectangle is going to be <coughs> four by one. So four by one. And you know, we can go ahead and align these. Do whatever you want. Um, then these are quarter inch panels, so we're going to go ahead and select them all, say extrude, curve, extrude distance <coughs> 0.25 inches, quarter inch steel panels. Okay, so those are our basic uh, kind of parts for the uh, steel components. Okay. Next piece is going to be. Um, Actually, we probably want to go ahead with the uh, with the wood components, and I think you could probably figure out, you know, how to make the wood components. You're going to make um, a rectangle, uh, but it's not going to have an offset, and then you're going to extrude that for the wood links that you need. Okay, I'll leave that up to you. The last piece of this <clears throat> is going to be this HDTV. This is going to be a little bit different than the things that we've looked at um, so far. I'm going to go ahead and actually hide these. And the HDTV is going to start with a box. It's a 3D box. Okay, and a box already has kind of a solid dimension. Okay, so start with the box tool, and you know start wherever. You can always move it later. So um, <clears throat> the dimensions are you know 48 inches by 32 inches by 8 inches. Okay, so that's our basic kind of volume. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to explode the box, explode, E-X-P-L-O-D-E, explode. And what that does is that it actually splits it into separate <clears throat> surfaces. Okay, then we're going to duplicate the border of a surface, so this is going to create a curve along the edge. So we're going to you know, duplicate uh, border, dupe border, D-U-P, and you can see that that gives us the edge. Okay. Then we're going to offset this curve, and we're going to offset it by um, an inch or so. So let's say distance uh, one inch. Which side? Inside, and that's going to give us the inside of our frame. Okay. We're going to delete the other uh, border curve. Don't need it. And then let's go to the top view. And like our site, <clears throat> we're going to project this curve into our uh, box. So project. The curve to project is the outside, yeah, the inside curve. Um, select enter, press, click the, select the surfaces, delete input, yes. Um, now it's been projected uh, into the surface. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a trim command. Say trim. Cutting object is our projected curve. The spot to trim is the inside of the surface, and look at that, it cuts it out. Okay, now with that curve selected, so we're done. Choose the curve. <clears throat> we're going to extrude the curve, uh, and we're going to say uh, cap yes. Delete input yes, and it's going to be extruded uh, negative one inch. You can't really see anything if you go into wireframe. You can see that that actually creates that. Let's go into that solid we made and explode that. Let's pick the top face and delete it. Now look at that. Last thing we're going to do is take all these surfaces together <coughs> and join them. One closed poly surface. So that is actually all a solid uh, surface, and that's our little HDTV uh, cabinet. So that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty nice. Okay. So you can you can keep. Uh, so you've got. If you go ahead and say show, you got your steel sections, different channels, quarter inch thickness, and your plates, which are also that thickness. 
and your HDTV. And the wood pieces, again, I'm going to expect you guys uh, to be able to create yourself. Uh, that shouldn't be too difficult. And that's really uh, all the pieces that you're going to need for this section. So this is just a really basic you know, introduction to you know, modeling with um, rhinoceros. And a lot of modeling is based on these, these two methods. One is to kind of extrude uh, a section, so doing a lot of curves and joining them and extruding them. And another one is to take a basic kind of object and to um, essentially uh, edit the surfaces to get the, uh, the um, form you want. And the nice thing about these, and this is what's going to be important later, is that these are all solids. Okay, And a solid is going to give you a nice section when you trim it. It's going to behave properly if you decide to balloon it at some point. So uh, these are really uh, these are quality pieces of geometry. And um, keep these in a file for yourself and uh, store them somewhere. And uh, we're going to use them again uh, in the next part of the assignment. Thanks very much. I'll see you guys in class.